Hello and welcome back to our Q&A sessions. So what have we got here then? Right, we've got a question here from Charlotte Whitehouse. Right, Charlotte, you say, what is your favourite campsite? And that's a really, really difficult one to answer because we haven't got an all-time favourite. I think view-wise, it has to be Three Cliffs Bay because it's overlooking the most beautiful, breathtaking view of, well, Three Cliffs Bay, (laughs) funnily enough. And it's just a lovely, wild sort of location where you've got, sort of hills around you and you can see the sea and it's just just lovely it's it's very elevated so that has to be one of our favorites doesn't it but um there was also a really nice site in glastonbury wasn't there uh, what was it called the, old oaks, old oaks old yes oaks. A, a, an adult only site yeah and that was like very high-end site very beautifully kept but the way it was laid out was each of you had your own little area with plants all around you you felt very secluded even though it was quite a big campsite that was really nice anyone who's watched many of our recent vlogs that was the one where uh, ellie got up early that morning with my daughter and Mm son-in-law and went up to the um the tour glastonbury tour to see the sunrise Mm. yeah so it was that video wasn't it yeah it's in a very nice location yeah very nice but yes, yeah, because that was funny because we only went to that site because it was Catherine's birthday treat. Yeah. And um, she chose to go there, didn't she? Yeah. Because it's not normally a sort of site we would choose. No. No, it was, uh, it was a pretty was high, pri- high end, quite expensive mm. to go to, a real treat sort of site where it had everything that you could want, like a hotel, wasn't it, really? The facilities were amazing and... Uh, yeah, you were paying a premium yeah, for that, but yeah. it, it was nice. It was worth the money, definitely. But, of course, generally, we I wouldn't say we don't avoid campsites, but uh, wild camping is our thing. Mm. Um, but uh, that wasn't the question. No, no. So I think those two are pretty top of our list, yeah, aren't they, yeah. I think. So thanks for that question, Charlotte. You've also got a second one, which I will let... Uh, Graham answer which is who chooses the music when you're driving and what do you listen to and apparently Jack is asking because he doesn't use Facebook (laughs) Mm. Um, well there's a couple of things there about what you've asked Um, do you mean that when we edit the videos and we've got a driving sequence and we put music to it because if that's uh, your question then uh, The answer is well and truly that Ellie chooses the music. She is the um, the musical director when it comes to our edits. asking me what music uh, when we're driving do we listen to we don't uh, we're either listening to talk sport or lbc or lbc news so it's all some some sort of talk radio on your radio on global player on the occasion we do listen to music it, it, i would select something like magic fm but we don't really Um, we're not really geared up to playing our own music, are we? No, I mean, I must admit, when we do put magic on, um, I find myself singing along, so it's probably why (laughs) we don't have it that often. I love that sort of music. It's our sort of generation. Well, I think on their playlist, they've only got eight records anyway. Yeah, and I like them all, so (laughs) I never get tired of it. (laughs) But I always feel it's never an argument there about 
it's my choice or it's your choice. I always feel that Graham does the driving and that kind of entitles him to listen to what he likes on the radio. So I think that's fair enough. You know, the driver should get to listen to what they want to really and it works pretty well. I mean, on the occasions where I've done any poor editing uh, when we're driving, if you do catch a... Uh, a moment where the radio is on, you're, you've probably noticed it's some sort of talk radio. It's hardly ever music. Mm. Which is odd, because we both do like music, don't we? Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's not something you often you often choose, is it, really? No. That was a good question. Thank you, Charlotte. Or Jack. Well, Jack, yeah. Mm, thank you. Next question we've got here is from Cat Ford. Would you consider going on a ferry with Merlin, maybe to Iceland? Well, we have been on a ferry with Merlin, but we haven't, we've only been on a ferry in Scotland, haven't we? Yeah. We've been on a ferry to Arran. Oh, have we, we haven't been to the Isle of Wight, not with Merlin. Not, not in Merlin, no. No, we did with Merv, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. but we've also we? been... Um, to uh, we came back on the ferry from sky didn't we we did that's right yes we did so it's quite a nice experience yeah we like it um yeah the funny thing is we've always met some really nice people on the ferry haven't we every time yeah people who are yeah really interested in the channel or they've got lovely dogs that we end up talking to them about dogs um yeah short ferry trips we're fine with aren't we well that's the issue isn't it Mm. um cat says about maybe going to Iceland. Yeah. I would simply love that. Mm. Um, one of our group members asked a question in a previous vlog, David Ackerman. That's how he got into um, wanting a camper van um, because they went to Iceland and they hired one. Mm. And uh, I'd love to do what, what he did out there in, in mm. it. And uh, we'd I love would. to take Merlin, mm. but probably because... We would have the same issue with the dogs. Where would they go mm. for, for that long crossing? Yeah. I don't know whether we would do it or not. No, our dogs have never been in kennels. Um, we have left them with friends for a night or two here and there, haven't we? Although they're not that keen, but, but they cope. Yeah. Um, it would be very tricky. And, and the people You just that... don't know, do mm. you? If, if, if they would just go to sleep in the van... It, everything would be fine. Mm, but they don't, do no. they? They don't even go to sleep in the van if we're on a campsite and we literally go and do some washing up or something and leave them for 10 minutes. They're all, like, chomping at the bit yeah. when we get there. They don't just go to sleep and relax. So it's quite hard. If they're like that when they're on a campsite, how would they be, you know, on a, a long ferry trip if they're left, they're left in the van? So it is a bit of a dilemma, really, isn't it? So... Cat, to answer your question, I think what we'll do, uh, we'll drive the dogs around to your house at some point <laughs> and we'll take a, a jet plane over to Iceland and we'll hire a van over there and we'll stay over there for two or three weeks. So good luck with all the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> He's being very cheeky, but we should say that Charlotte and Cat are in fact our daughters. So, yes, we weren't going to say, but you might think he's been a bit rude to one of our subscribers by saying we'll bring the dogs to your house. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Oh, now my phone's ringing. (laughs) It's probably Charlotte. GoPro, stop recording. And also to confirm that uh, Kat is the one with uh, Reggie that some of our um, Facebook uh, group users will know Reggie. Mm. And uh, this is Reggie. (laughs) Right, so... we got a question here from Michelle Harris. Thanks, Michelle. You're saying, how long do we plan to keep Merlin for? Now, that's an interesting question. It's a very interesting mm. one. Uh, when we first bought Merlin, we thought it would be our last camper. And in fact, this may be the case. We haven't actually made our minds up yet. We've had Merlin for two years now, um, and we will certainly be keeping him for a couple of years more Um, but uh, we do think now that maybe we will change the van in two years Uh, 
because there have been a few issues with these vans. Um, we had the engine management light come on and basically they have so many eco-credentials and the electronics is really complicated mm. on them, isn't it? Um, and so that's a slight concern to us that in years to come, will this become more of an issue with the van? We, it might not be. We don't know. We've heard of people whose vans go on quite happily for year after year after year and other people have had issues with them, haven't they? Well, I, I think the vans are capable of going mm. on for hundreds of thousands, thousands of miles. Of miles yeah. But um, it's the electronics mm. to keep the uh, eco side of things working correctly that, that seems to be uh, what causes some issues. Issues, yeah. Uh, and another reason why I think... I might like to change Merlin is that because it's a factory built van sometimes uh, they're designed to to be really nice and to I love the design of Merlin inside but they don't always build the quality in the way that they would if you got a company to build the van for you uh, by that I mean things like insulation I mean we took some of the panels off Merlin the interior panels to put insulation in didn't yeah, we yeah. Uh, and we've done a lot. Graham's quite practical at repairing little things if they need to be fixed. But I do feel that the quality control on mass-produced vans is probably not quite as good as if you find a little company uh, with a you know where you buy the van and they convert it for you. So it's quite an interesting concept yeah. for us to actually maybe at some point get that done. But we haven't really made our mind up on that because, again, it's cost as well. It would, would cost a lot more to do that, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very tempting. We, we see things like um, Rick and Heather uh, uh, upgrading uh, Pearl, aren't they, mm. to, um, to to a new a new van. And that that's very tempting. Yeah. Uh, other people we know are, are waiting for vans from places like Consort. And, mm. and, and they all look excellent. And some people in our Facebook group have uh, already got the uh, Consort Reef. Yeah, the quality on those does look... The quali the build quality of the interior uh, does look to be very good, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, whereas we thought Merlin was our sort of forever van, I'm not, I'm not convinced now that it is, but we really aren't sure, are we, to, to answer your question, whether we'll keep him beyond the two years or not, really. No, there's a lot of things to consider there, aren't there? Financial as well. I mean, obviously, it costs a lot to, to get a company to convert a van yeah, for you. Yeah. Um, but we love, we love the van. The layout of Merlin, I mean, is perfect. There's very little to criticise. I love being out in the van and I love the way that it works in such a small space. It does everything we need it to do in, in the right sort of size that you can get it the van where you want to. Yes. Mm. So that was a really good question. So, yes, I would say, Michelle, we ki we plan to keep the van for at least two years, um, maybe more, but we will look at the situation then and maybe upgrade if we can afford to do so or decide yeah. that we yeah. want to carry on. Thanks so much for watching. And um, we're actually really both very excited because whilst we were looking for footage for this vlog, we actually found our first ever film about our travels. We made it a few years ago, well before Wizard in the Wild, and it was never ever intended to go out onto YouTube. It's very rough and raw. We thought we'd let you decide if you want to see it or not. If you do want to see it, then please say yes please in the comments. Likewise, if you don't, then please say no thanks in the comments. I promise we won't be offended. We will count up all the comments and if the yeses win, then much to our embarrassment, we will put the vlog out onto YouTube. Thanks for watching and join us next week where we resume the Aaron Revisited series.